ankle fractures. This is a review of the important points in ankle fractures. An ankle fracture needs anatomic reduction and absolute stability. Anatomic reduction and stable fixation of the posterior malleolus is very important. So let's take the example. In a trimalleolar ankle fracture with syndesmotic instability, anatomic reduction and fixation of the posterior malleolus provides greater syndesmotic stability and it lessens the need for syndesmotic screw fixation. Actually, it restores the stability better than placing syndesmotic screws. Another important point is failure of fixation or conservative treatment that gives us undesirable result of ankle fracture treatment. So you see the patient with hardware failure and syndesmotic problems and malalignment of the ankle. And as I said, some of these patients are treated surgically and they did not do well, and some of them are treated conservatively, and they also did not do well. Some of the patients may have redisplacement of the syndesmosis after a syndesmotic fixation. Some of the patients may have reduction of the syndesmosis that may be obvious or not obvious, and some of the patient may have shortening of the fibula, some of the patient may have conservative treatment and the ankle is not well aligned. So you need to do revision surgery. Let's study a case of an ankle fracture malalignment due to failure of fixation. The presentation is that of an older fracture that healed improperly or it is fixed and the fixation failed, then you need to revise the treatment. So the first thing you want to do, you want to look at the ankle and see if you have arthritis. If you have some arthritis and the patient is young, you can revise the ankle treatment. So you want to make sure you don't have a lot of arthritis before you do this big surgery. So the question is, are we going to revise the syndesmosis alone? Because one way or the other, the syndesmosis is malaligned. The easiest one is the one where you can see a gap in the x-ray. When the syndesmosis is gapped or wide open, you need to have an anatomic syndesmotic reduction and fixation, and the fibula is of normal length. As you can see here, you can see the Shinton line is good, the dime sign is good. So this is the one we revise the syndesmosis alone, and we close the gap. The second question is, are we going to work on the fibula because the fibula is short or mal reduced? And after that, we stabilize the syndesmosis. So this example, we need two steps. The step number one, work on the fibula that short or mal reduced. Step number two, work on stabilizing the syndesmosis. When the fibula is short and mal reduced, we need to lengthen the fibula and reduce and fix the syndesmosis. It will be extremely rare if we work on the fibula alone to restore the length alone without working on the syndesmosis. Do we need to do osteotomy and lengthening of the fibula? to improve the length and the rotation of the fibula, then after that, we revise fixation of the fibula. To reduce the syndesmosis anatomic, you must have good alignment, length, and rotation of the fibular fracture first, before reducing the syndesmosis. 
If the Shinten line is interrupted and the dime sign is interrupted, then the fibula is short. Again, how do you know if you have good length of the fibula? How do you know that the fibula is not short? This is the way where we decide if the fibula is short or not. You can see here the fibula is short, and you can see here the fibula is normal. Another important point, when you deal with diabetic patients, make sure you check for peripheral neuropathy or charco joint, because there are going to be more complications with these patients. If you're going to handle a diabetic patient, you will need to do surgery, and you will need to put more hardware and prolong the area of non-weight bearing. So instead of six weeks, you make it three months. Another important point is the external rotation stress view. We do external rotation stress view before surgery to look at the medial clear space to check the integrity of the deltoid ligament. If you do a stress view x-rays before surgery, it is done to see if the deltoid ligament is injured or not in an ankle fracture when you are not sure that the deltoid is injured. So if it turned out to be injured, the patient will need surgery. If it is not injured, the patient will not need surgery. So you do the stress view and the medial clear space does not widen, then it's external rotation type two, conservative treatment. But if you did the external rotation stress view and the medial clear space widened, then the deltoid is ruptured. Then you will need to do surgery. So before surgery, you will check the medial clear space to check the integrity of the deltoid ligament. During surgery, when you check the integrity of the syndesmosis, you check the tibiofibular clear space. In surgery, the external rotation stress view x-rays or the cutting test will check on the integrity of the syndesmosis. During surgery, when you check the integrity of the syndesmosis, you can also check the medial clear space in addition to the tibiofibular clear space. Driving and ankle fractures. If it is a pylon fracture, if the patient starts weight bearing now, the patient can drive six weeks from now. For the ankle fracture, driving is nine weeks from the day of surgery. Another important point, the syndesmosis reduction must be anatomic. Type of fixations, screws, how many screws, and if you remove the screws or not, or are controversial. But what's not controversial is the syndesmotic reduction must be anatomic. Another important point, the fibula is the key for ankle stability. You must restore adequate length, rotation, and the alignment of the fibula, and that will help anatomic alignment of the syndesmosis. Watch for reduction of the syndesmosis because there's a lot of male alignment. If you are not sure, direct inspection and reduction of the syndesmosis can be helpful. Failure of syndesmotic fixation can occur in overweight patients. It can also occur from surgical errors that may not be recognized during surgery. Another important point what is the mechanism of injury? The spination adduction one that have the vertical fracture of the medial malleolus and the talus goes medially, the only fracture ankle where the talus goes medial. There is an impaction in the anteromedial aspect of the ankle. 
He can fix it by screws parallel to the joint or anti-glide plate. There's also pernation abduction fracture where the fibula is comminuted, usually at or above the syndesmosis. You also will have an external rotation injury, pronation, external rotation, or spination external rotation. And when it is spination external rotation, this is going to be the direction of the fibular fracture. You see the fibular fracture in the lateral view. You're not going to be able to tell from the AP view, but if it is pronation external rotation, this is the direction of the fracture. And here a comparison between spination external rotation and pronation external rotation. Another point is do you use lateral plate on the fibula or posterior anti-glide plate? If you use lateral plate, it will decrease the perineal tendon irritation. But the patient may feel the plate and the screws may violate the joint. If you use posterior plate on the fibula, it's more stable. It's biomechanically better. It will cause more irritation of the perineal tendons, especially if the plate is placed low and the screw heads are prominent. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.